software package that was out when the machine was current and it's kind of a, a package that was in line with what Commodore did with the plus four it was literally a cassette which had a word processor a database a spreadsheet and some graphic software on it and I kind of think that you know this could have been useful and I kind of think it's something I would have used if I didn't have a ROM on a ROM box with the word processor built into it basically rather than a cassette tape when this machine was current and I think that um, you know if you want a bit of a budget it might have been something that you would have chosen in the shop because you know at just over five pounds it's a very very cheap productivity suite really so we're going to have a quick look at it and then um, see if it's actually worth using now or was worth buying when it was current. This is mini office for the Acorn Electron. Now it's not a massively feature packed, well uh, looking at this it's not a ma massively feature packed um, product because this is the manual and this is it. Tiny little thing and it's on cassette and originally it cost 591 which is not an awful lot of money even back in the um, 1980s but on this it has a word processor a database a spreadsheet and as I say, it was released in 1985. Mine have got quite a good rewards according to the sticker on the front. So we're just going to load it up and um, might take some time. So I'm not going to subject you to watching the cassette go through. And it looks like it's actually on its way. So have a look at the screen. It looks like a typical 1980s word processor. It has um, large letter editing, normal, does your typing speed, um, and you can load and save your text files. So uh, let's have a, a look and see how we get on with this. Okay, now what I like about this, it just looks like a normal, everyday, standard word processor. And it seems to be exactly the same as, um, or very similar to WordWise on the BBC Micro, and also to the um, Commodore Plus 4 software. Yeah, so for return, and yep, it seems like doing the word count at the top free number of characters um, it's pretty limiting really but because if you look at down every time you knock it down even for a line space the other thing I've noticed is it's just a little laggy as well it's quite laggy on the keyboard and it's not the keyboard because I've tested this through basic and it's fine the timings or the checking of the keyboard isn't brilliant so it may be that it's got a very slow interrupt. It might also be the fact that the ULA is doing up to four runs to transfer the data. I mean, it could be just that. It could be just the actual makeup of the electron itself, but it doesn't do it in basic. So if you type in at a decent speed, it struggles to keep up. But in saying that, it's um, not bad. It's not as bad as it should be for a £5.90 odd pence piece of software. You can kind of just about scroll around at will. There we go. And then alter things as you need to.
and it seems to be okay. I mean, the colours aren't bad. It's um, it's not glaring, and it's not going to cause you any issues with the eyes. But look at how the count's coming down. It's 55 words, and you've got 5,242 characters left. You're hardly going to write your first novel on it. But I'm guessing that that wasn't the point of this, because if you sat there as a student, which is more than likely why you would have bought an Electron, and you wanted to do your college work on it, you wouldn't be doing a, a novel. You'd be doing half a dozen pages at a time. And if you had to split it up into a couple of saves, really, and a couple of prints, it wasn't that bad because everything else had to do it that way as well. Because we were basing it on modern standards, and this isn't a modern machine. It's, um, it's one of the early adopters and it's, it's going to have its foibles, it's going to have its quirks. And I think that maybe my um, typing on it was being a little bit harsh, you know, typing at speed. And maybe it's just the fact that we have a, a kind of a keyboard that hasn't been used in a long time. Plus, it's quite mechanical. Everything today is fairly soft touch, and I think your fingers get used to soft touch keys. Okay, yeah, it's um, a lot of the lag is basically down to the speed of the machine because it's running fairly slow. But the more I use it, the more I realize that it's not so much the, the software because the software will catch up. It will still catch up and it will still put the text on the screen. But I think you're used to instant text nowadays where the cursor and the control of the characters are immediate on the screen. There is no lag of the characters catching up. And I think that's what makes you think that the keyboard is at fault. But I think it's, um, <laughs> we've got used to modern kit and it's um, a lot easier to type on at times. So yeah, I think um, overall, this just seems to be a, a reasonably solid word processor. It seems to do everything that you would probably want it to do. The limitations are the amount of characters you can have with the amount of pages and um, I also think that one of the other limitations is the fact that you know it's not this is it it is just a text editor it, calling it a word processor is probably a stretch in modern times but you know as a text editor it seems to be okay it doesn't seem to have too many problems and as you can see by the the speed it scrolls at it's not exactly fast yeah but it's fine it would do probably what i would have needed when i was um at college and so on and um i would have been quite happy with it because there was very little else to compare it against. So it's more of a basic text editor, but it would get you by. So I think we should have a look at the other bits of software on this magic office or this office software suite that um, we have on cassette tape. So just before we get into the next part of the software on this cassette, I'm going to try the keyboard just to show you how the lag was quite apparent on that bit of software and I thought it was basically the keyboard on this machine was playing up. There we go. And it scrolls really smoothly. It scrolls along the screen. It's not doing the pause that it was doing before. So I'll clear the screen and we'll um, start again. Okay, so this time we'll load the next part of the um, programming, which apparently is a database. So here we go, we're loading it in. I'm not going to subject it to the entire thing because I guess it will take a little bit of time. And while that's loading, I'll just show you the little manual that comes with it. That's it. 
tiny, tiny little manual. At this point, on a modern computer, I guess we would have given up the will to live by now, waiting for the software to install, but, you know, this is a classic machine, this is what you did. You waited a lot for stuff to install. And you're greeted with quite a nice screen, actually. It's, um, it's very reminiscent of the original BBC computer program, but it's banded lines down the screen. I quite like that and I think on a CRT it would look really good but we're trying to avoid the flickering so we're using an LCD today but it looks pretty decent. So if I want to set up a new file I'll just go B. How many fields to record? Two. Field title. This is very very intuitive really it's not a lot different to a modern database when you're setting it up otherwise other than the graphics side of it so field title name field type we'll do string field length uh, 30 characters oh, well, it doesn't like that 20 field title um, Let's just try postcode. And we'll do it as a string again. And we'll do the field length again as 20 maximum. There we go. Is this correct? Yes. Okay, so we'll add some records name. Let's say, and in that, nope, postcode. Okay, so that's as simple as it gets. So next record, name, Bob. Okay, next record, and Joe. Uh, okay, so if you go back to the menu, you can do your field summary, name and postcode. And you can modify your records, input record number. But we didn't have set record number, so I don't know how that was ever going to work on this one. Um, we'll list the records. List the screen or the printer, so A. Uh, from one to three. next record and so on okay so it's kind of a basic system that you probably want to catalog some of your own software on um, let's see if we can do a search search on name and search for a string and yeah it's actually reasonably quick actually it's, it's very quick it's seems to be a lot more suited to this than it was for a word processor. But as I say, the word processor wasn't bad. I think we just got used to the speed without any lag of a, a modern system. So we'll try and find a add record. See, so um, pull, postcode. OK, next, and we'll do one more. Um, Postcode. Okay, so if we want to alter a record, is this correct? Yes. Is this correct? Postcode no. And we'll do FK11. And then next record. And it just carries on and on till you hit escape. But we're limited.
186 record. And that's on a two field database. So in a two field database, we have 186 records, not huge, not huge at all. But I like it. It's simple. It does its job. It's um, relatively easy to get along with, even though it's, you know, input by keyboard, no graphics, no mice. And um, it's quite explanatory. It doesn't need any learning because it's all on the screen ready for you to use. And that, I like that. And I think simplicity is the key. I think if you did something like this on a modern machine, which could have as many records as you like saved, um, then I could see an advantage to somebody who's just doing a little mailing list or if they were just keeping their own private records and so on on here, how useful it would be. But I have a sneaking suspicion this is holding all of the records in memory rather than what you would have on a modern machine or even if you had a disk drive attached where it would write to the drive the record as you did them. Well, this seems to looks like it dumps out the entire contents of the memory to the cassette tape when you want to save a current file. It limits the um, the application of the program a bit, but I actually quite like it. It's a good bit of um, nostalgia to see how far we've actually come. So let's go on to the spreadsheet and then see how that one does. Start the old cassette tape and see how we go. Again, I'm not going to subject you to the entire loading sequence. And it's still on its way, but you get the usual splash screen, which is a nice little touch. And uh, we're just waiting for the software to load. I guess if I was waiting for this for real, I'd have probably taken out a notepad and pencil and did it longhand because this is quite a long time to load a program. Now you can understand why at this point Commodore Plus 4 had ROM which were instant, instant loading. It was a great idea. And um, it's just a crying shame that the uh, Plus 4 really didn't take off in the way it was intended. But the Electron could have had ROMs as well through the addition of a ROM box. But here we are, spreadsheets on, so we're gonna create a file. So yes, number of columns, I don't know, we'll take six, keep it simple. Number of rows, we'll go for the minimum, so 10. Update continuously, yes. Right. Okay, so, okay, so it works in full decimal points, which can be a bit of a, a nightmare, really. It kind of seems like a, a normal spreadsheet, but the, um, the problem we've got is, is it's very difficult to navigate around because you've only seem to have functions to go left and right. Moving around the screen is a bit of a, a bit of a pain. So you can you can add in your columns and your rows just like by doing your normal buttons on here. But moving from one to the next, it's very difficult to find out which actual bracket you're in or which row or column you're in. It doesn't actually create a lot of sense. So if I set this back to zero. And then we have everything back to zero. Everything seems to be working on the, the, the function keys at the top. So you can set your labels, numbers, mode, and that's fine. That works fine, numbers. It's not very intuitive, to be honest. It's not very good. Even if you search at this really ridiculous manual, it doesn't give you an awful awful lot. And the only thing you can do by pressing shift in F1, you'll see at the top corner, that's your actual sum. And it's not brilliant. It's not intuitive. The brackets are in the wrong place. You keep getting issues with the text and the format. And it just seems to want to 
follow through whatever you do. So if I do Shift F1, it's coming up with no copy. So if I start again, completely start again, then we are kind of stuck with this formula and there's no escape from it. Once you start a spreadsheet on here, it looks like you have to go all the way through. See, labels are fine. You can give it a label. The biggest issue you've got with this kind of thing is that it's limited. It's not very intuitive. It doesn't work very well. And there's no other functions on it other than the number of rows, columns, and whether you're adding or subtracting. That seems to be roughly about it. So it's not a very good spreadsheet. It's not very easy to use. The, the manual is pretty much useless. And all you do is you just change your numbers around. It says navigate around using the, the cursor keys. Well, the biggest problem with that is that you can only go left and right. And you can only work down your columns and your rows one by one. So, yeah, I think I'd take this one as a fail. I think the, the plus four is better on the plus four. The software on the plus four is much better. Basically, I'm not really that impressed by this because uh, this it's very limited. There's not much you can do with it. And I expected a little bit more from this, considering the other two programs before it were actually all right. They, um, they weren't bad at all. The database was great. It was something that you would write if you wanted to catalog your own stuff. But this program is not very good, I think. I'd have probably paid for the word processor and the database and I would have kind of left out this completely. But then again, it's all part of the um, the package. It's all part of the scene. So we're going to move on to the graphic side of it now. Again, I can't subject you to the next 15 minutes of loading a small graphics program. So I'll just cut it nice and short with video editing. Back to the green and yellow splash screen, and it's loading it. I'm quite surprised these old cassette tapes still work, and they're pretty reliable. And it's nice that they are, because we would probably have lost some of this software along the way. So it's probably nice to get it converted onto SD and to keep these old cassettes sealed up somewhere so they can't degrade and can't get moisture on them and so on and just keep them as good as possible because they are a little bit of history after all and this is the little graphics package but what you doesn't tell you really in the manual um, unless it's actually missing from this is that you need to use the spreadsheet first set up a file and then load the file name in so but what I've also discovered is, is the reason why things are slower than they should be is because this package is basic. It's written in basic. And I'm going to forgive it, the, the lag on the keyboard. And because it's written in the slowest form of BBC basic that was produced because these machines were slower than the BBC Micro. If it was on the BBC Micro, I doubt there would be any slight keyboard lag on there at all. Um, but I'm guessing even if I used it, I would get used to that keyboard lag and I wouldn't worry about it because I wouldn't be looking at the screen constantly as you do when you just type your modern day on your modern day version of Word um, and you don't even notice the characters appearing because there's no delay. On this one, you can see it. And I think that's what puts you off a little bit as you type. But yeah, it's, it's written in basic. And so that's kind of changed my mind completely about this little software package is that they've managed to do an office suite on a, a speed hobbled Acorn Electron in basic. And it works and it does the job and it would have got you out of a hole at university or college or whatever you were doing on these machines at the time. So I'm not going to come down that hard on it because because of the way it was written. I'm guessing that if we put this into context and we actually then rewrote this in assembly, 
it would make a half decent package. There'd be very little to no lag, no delay. You'd have more fails and more memory to store records for your database, which is, I was kind of wondering why it was a bit limited on, you know, the file sizes and the page sizes, because I know it's only 32K. This machine is only 32K, but technically 32K can store a lot more than this machine was telling me or this software was telling me so that's one of the biggest reasons why so i'm not going to lambast this um, software too much because it's a good program written in basic i can't knock it for that so is it worth buying is it worth using um yes i think it is i think it's not just for the sake of nostalgia i think if you hooked up an epson dot matrix printer to this you could actually use it um, or use the word processor side of it for labels or short documents or putting down, you know, a little to-do script to put in with your classic machines. So, you know, specifications, what's with it and so on. And that would all work fine. But I'm guessing if you want to write your novel on it and you want to do your corporate accounts, it's not really the machine for you. If you can get around the spreadsheet and the way it works and then live with the limited columns and you can't add them once you've set the number of columns and rows and you can do your finances on it or your home finances or as Commodore used to say about the plus four, balance your checkbook, whatever that really means. And um, it's something that could be useful. The, the, the word processor is definitely useful. Um, you can use the word processor and I would say, yes, give it a shot if you've got one of these and just have a play with it, just simply for nostalgia. As an everyday machine, um, not really, not so much, not so much. I mean, the Acorn has a nice keyboard and it still feels nice today. But it, the limitations of modern use of these machines, um, such as database, word processor, is going to limit what you can actually do on this. As far as the word processor goes, I would use this if it was on disk. I think tape's very cumbersome. Um, and loading and saving files from tape is very cumbersome and slow. So copy this to an SD or a emulated tape drive and it might be okay. But it was nice to have a look at what the Acorn Electron could do when it was launched and when it was out. Because this was out not long before this was written. So it's quite an early version. Okay, so we've had a look at this package and it has its flaws. It's slow, or well, it was never going to be quick. Um, the word processor is more of a text editor, which is fine because that's what most word processors were at the time. And it would do the job. It would get your work done as long as you didn't expect to write a full novel. The database, I quite liked it because um, Maybe it wasn't the best database in the world and maybe it wasn't the most fantastically written database in the world. But, you know, the the blue banded lines on the screen were incredibly nostalgic. Um, the way it was so easy to set up with its fields and it was very easy to use. And really, is that all you really needed for a home database? I probably think so at the time, because what were you really going to do with it other than catalog your own software or catalog your video collection or, you know, just do some things for your hobby. You know, if you were into trains or models and cataloging your own stuff, which is fine. It was good and it would have worked. It would have also worked for small business to do a mail shot, which again, would have been handy. Now, the spreadsheet, not a clue. I mean, the spreadsheet was one of the worst I'd ever used. It was not intuitive. The command structure didn't make sense. 
the um, limited rows and columns that you started off with was what you were left with, which wasn't good. And, um, you know, the this method of working out your sums as well was very similar to what you did today, but it was just not very nice to use and it was clunky and it didn't make a lot of sense. My, it didn't help by the world's smallest nonsensical manual either. You know, you get one example of everything in here, one example of a, uh, a word processor document, one example of a spreadsheet, one example of a database, and that is it. So the spreadsheet was a bust. It wasn't brilliant. I mean, if you'd spent you know, the next week trying to work it out, it may start making more sense and maybe easier to use. But even when this software was launched, I don't think anybody really wanted to spend the time pouring over a micro manual for the, for, for the week ahead trying to find out how you use it. And it was also limited by what it could do. And the graphics program was, that's when we found out it was written in basic. Um, mm -hmm. we, you could break it, you could look at the listing and find out how it was written. And all it does is pulls up a spreadsheet file and sticks a nice graph to it. So, you know, it would have been useful. That's if you could ever work out how the spreadsheet worked properly, which I'm sure, giving enough, given enough time, you could. Now, is it worth it? Well, yeah, maybe more for a nostalgic front than any other reason. And the fact it still works, it's a cassette tape and it works. And it seems that cassettes seem to be the most reliable medium from that era because very few floppy disks survive. So, I would have it, I'd keep it for your collection, I'd even play around with it. The word processor would if you had a dot matrix printer, but apart from that, um, it's more of a nostalgia thing. And there's a little bit too much lag on, you know, the word processor itself. But that's something you wouldn't bother you with if you were using it all the time and you'd got used to it. Which, you know, you would have, because you would have had to, because there was nothing else around when this was launched, especially not for these machines unless you bought expensive add-on hardware. So I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you find it useful and I hope one day you, if you come across one of these, just try it out, have a bit of fun. And it gives you a chance to power up the old Acorn Electron and, you know, let it out, stretch its legs a little bit. Okay, so thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And I hope to um, bump into you again on this channel. And I hope you subscribe. Thank you very much.